Hello, my name is Benjamin Hart. I'm an American attorney and the managing director of Integrity Legal here in Bangkok, Thailand. I find it rather interesting. There's been a lot in, I'm not even going to cite articles in this, in this video. This is kind of more of an opinion piece. There's been a lot of talk in a lot of the press. I think it's funny, like Bangkok Post seems to have like a real grudge against cannabis and I don't understand why. Meanwhile, some other, you know, I've seen some other authors who write in the sort of ether that is the internet of Thai headlines, Thai news. I've seen a lot of folks, editorial pieces, kind of talking about, you know, it, there just seems to be this movement that just does not like cannabis. And they've got this bee in their bonnet, if you will, about, you know, people that, you know, what they're doing with cannabis and recreational cannabis. I've noticed a whole bunch of people are saying, we can't have recreational cannabis. It's, I, I don't get it. I really, really don't. We've now seen for over a year what the consequences would be if cannabis was just pretty much free and easy legal. Anyone over 20 could get it who's not a pregnant woman or with medical conditions that preclude them, you know, being able to purchase it and use it, whatever. The sky has not fallen. Dogs and cats are not living together. There is not mass hysteria. Things are pretty all right. And in fact, we've seen an entirely new sector being added to the Thai economy on top of it all, and coming off of three years of shutdown and really terrible tourist numbers, I don't see where this is a drawback for the nation. But what I really think is interesting is this ongoing sort of kerfuffle or just, I, I, it just seems to be a theme in the narrative right now, this notion of recreational cannabis. I've never seen anybody get, you know, have you ever heard anyone refer to alcohol as recreational alcohol? Alcohol has medicinal properties. Anybody that's ever gotten a, a jab, ever gotten a, a shot from a doctor has used medicinal alcohol. They rub it on your arm before they stick the needle in. It's a method of maintaining hygiene. It's a method of maintaining cleanliness. It's, it's a good thing, but it's alcohol. And then you can walk out, you know, if you're of age, and you can walk out to a bar and get the same product poured into a glass, you know, on the rocks or whatever, and you can enjoy that same thing recreationally. I never see folks up in arms about the notion of recreational alcohol. Now, in a prior video we did, we were citing an article from the Patia Mail where they were talking about maybe we should utilize prohibition methodologies for dealing with cannabis and things of this nature. Come on, everybody. Come on. Let's just be adults about all of this. At the end of the day, people do things that they want to do. And as long as, the, in my opinion, as long as they're not doing something, you know, it's like if it's, a, if it's a one in three, it's like Russian roulette, you know, I'm not in favor of allowing people to play Russian roulette, like literally or not. I, I think that's a bad idea. It's bad public policy. People aren't playing Russian roulette when, they, when they're using quote unquote recreational cannabis. Again, whatever that means. Just like people aren't playing Russian roulette when they are engaging in imbibing of recreational alcohol. That's not what they're doing. They're, yes, they're adding a little bit of risk that there may be some detrimental impact of that substance upon them. But adults are allowed to take those kinds of risks. Adults are allowed to choose for themselves, within reason, what goes into their body and what they like to enjoy, either recreationally or whatever. So this notion of recreational cannabis and that this is some scourge, I think that in fact, the facts on the ground just do not warrant that conclusion. Again, we've seen what the outcome of this would be over the past roughly year and a half. All I've seen is a mitigation of possible problems in the commercial real estate sector because we've seen so many of these stores pop up. I also see a lot of people who are employed in this sector who, you know, have jobs and are productive members of society, presumably paying their taxes, etc. I don't see at the end of the day, and now, I, and I've said it before and I'll see it, say it again, I do agree with reasonable regulation. I think regulation needs to happen. I think we definitely need to keep it away from kids. We need to make sure children are aware of the risks, just like we make sure children are aware of the risks of alcohol. You know, it's not really all that different at the end of the day. And we can see some benefit to the Thai economy. But I don't know where this nanny minder subset of folks is coming from where they've just unilaterally decided that they need to be out there telling folks what to do and that, that 
recreational cannabis is something that we, they need to guard against and they need to protect us from ourselves. I just don't see the logic behind that. I especially don't see the logic behind that when, again, nobody sits around, you know, pulling their hair out or running around clutching their pearls because of recreational alcohol. 